Introduction to the Bible, Session 13, The Johannine Literature. This includes the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John. These writings are traditionally attributed to the Apostle John and are called the Johannine Literature. These books share common themes and writing styles. First, the Gospel of John. Authorship and Dating. The book itself is anonymous. Early church tradition connected this to the Apostle John. Very few scholars have debated this issue. John was known as the Beloved Disciple. The Date. There are different opinions on this. John could have written this when he was older, perhaps 85 to 95 AD, or before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 90. John wrote from Ephesus, possibly to Christians of that area. See the seven churches of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, which are located in that area. The purpose of John's gospel is given in John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. In other words, John could have written a lot more, but he chose specifically what he has in this book for a purpose, and that is found in the next verse. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John wrote this gospel so that the readers will come to believe in Jesus Christ, and that will lead to eternal life. Who is this Jesus? In John's gospel, there are some unusual statements that are made by Jesus. Jesus says, I am, many times in this gospel. This recalls the Old Testament background. The Hebrew for I am is anihu. This was often used to describe the essential qualities of God. When Moses asked God who was sending him to free the Egyptian slaves, God simply said, I am. I am is used with nothing afterwards. These are non-predicate sayings. These are used a number of times. We would expect something afterwards, but Jesus is echoing the I am of the Old Testament. Many times there is something that follows. These are called the predicate sayings. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, truth, and life. I am the vine. All of these sayings offer a choice to the reader of whether or not to believe in Jesus. Another way that John shows that Jesus is the Son of God and that the reader should believe in him and receive eternal life is that John uses seven signs that point to the power of Jesus. Jesus changes water into wine at Cana. He heals the royal official's son in Capernaum. He heals the paralytic at, at Bethesda. He feeds 5,000 people with a, a very small lunch of a boy. He walks on water. He heals a man born blind. And he raises Lazarus from the dead. Now let's look at the contents a little closer. At the beginning, John reveals Jesus to be the Word of God. The Word is described in four relationships in verses 1 to 5. First, related to God, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Second, related to the Word, verse 3. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Verse 4, related to humanity. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. And finally, related to sin, in verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word was revealed by the ministry of John the Baptist, who came as a witness to the word, verses 6 through 13. The benefits brought by the Word are described in verses 14 to 18. The Word became flesh. The Word brings grace. The Word reveals the truth. To see the Word is to see God. John then records the John the Baptist's testimony in the rest of chapter 1. John's witness about himself, John's witness about Christ, and the witness of the disciples. In chapter 2, Jesus performs a miracle at a wedding in Canaan in Galilee, turning water into wine. Jesus shows himself as the new temple, 
in chapter 2, verses 13 to 22, he clears the temple and Jews ask for a sign. And then there's a transition. Chapter 3, the theme is new birth. Jesus talks with Nicodemus about being born again. New birth is illustrated in chapter 4 when Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman at the well and this woman believes and her life is changed. Conflict and controversy develop next in chapters 5 through 12. Jesus heals a paralytic on the Sabbath and the controversy develops. On the Passover, Jesus feeds 5,000, the bread of life, and responses to Jesus in chapter 6. The controversy over the tabernacle, Jesus as the new source of life and controversy about who Jesus is. A woman who is caught in adultery is about to be stoned. Interestingly, this story is not found in the manuscripts earlier than the 5th century, but it is consistent with the gospel accounts as far as the themes go. Chap uh, chapter 8, more claims of authority. Jesus heals a man born blind and more controversy in chapter 9. In chapter 10, the dedication or Hanukkah, the good shepherd is revealed. Chapter 11, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead and proclaims he is the resurrection and the life. Chapter 12 are preparations for Calvary and the cross. In chapters 13 through 16, we see a call to love. The example of love, Jesus washes his disciples' feet in chapter 13. The disciples are uncertain, and Jesus proclaims that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The ability to love will, become, will come through the coming of the Holy Spirit, chapter 14. The source of love is being connected to the vine in chapter 15. The challenge to love is the word, the obedience that will be required through and by the help of the Holy Spirit. The power to love will be through the cleansing of the coming counselor, chapter 16. The Lord's prayer for his disciples is recorded in chapter 17. Jesus is arrested and put on trial in chapter 18 and 19. He is crucified and buried in chapter 19 and resurrected in chapter 20. Je Jesus appears to his disciples and they experience a miraculous catch of fish. And then P Jesus reinstates Peter in chapter 21 after Peter had denied him three times. Let's think very uh, briefly about New Testament Christology. Studying the Gospel of John raised the important question of the person of Jesus Christ. Christology is the study of Christ, the science of whose object is Christ. The Christian faith is built upon a historical person. The New Testament is not so concerned with describing Christ's nature in relationship to God's nature as it is in describing the person and work of Christ. The emphasis in the New Testament is what Christ has done, does, or will do, and not in a concise description of the Trinity. The first Christians attempted to show how Jesus was the fulfillment of Jewish expectations. As the church became more Hellenistic and Greek, it began to incorporate Hellenistic ideas. Thus, philosophical questions began to be asked. The same question Jesus asked his disciples is the same for us today. Mark chapter 8, verses 27 and 29. Who do you say that I am? Essential to New Testament Christology is that Jesus is involved with the total history of revelation and salvation, from creation to the completion of the ages. Significant titles for Jesus in the New Testament include Prophet, High Priest, Mediator, Servant of God, Lamb of God, Messiah, Son of David, Son of Man, Judge, Holy One of God, Lord, Savior, King, Logos or Word, Son of God, God. The ultimate power of Jesus is not in what he said or even his miracles, but in his life, death, and resurrection. Some early heresies about the person of Jesus included the following. The Ebionites, they believed that Jesus became the Christ at baptism, and ceased to be the Christ at the crucifixion. Another group was the Gnostics. They were Platonic in their thinking. Plato believed that the world of the flesh was, is evil and that there's, the truth is spiritual. Gnostics believed that Jesus could not have come in the flesh because the flesh is evil. Salvation comes through secret knowledge. Jesus was God's method of 
showing this secret knowledge. Docetism. Jesus only appeared to be human, but was actually only a spirit. The early church had to fight against these heresies. Some of the New Testament was written against the development of these heresies. Dealing with heresies. There are many different ideas floating around about Jesus, who Jesus was and is. Many of those are not orthodox and are contrary to traditional biblical Christianity. Here are some simple suggestions about how to deal with these. First of all, know your Bible. If you know the truth, you'll be better able to tell what is false. Know your theology. Know how to explain what you believe. Know your history, church history. Know what the heresies were that the church has faced. Know the heresies and religions of your area. What is being taught in your area that is not true? Develop answers for difficult questions. Have a servant attitude. And do not compromise your faith or theology. Next, let's look at 1 John. Introduction. Authorship. The letter itself is anonymous. The author, however, knew the Gospel of John. The style of writing and the theology links this to the Gospel of John. So most people will accept the Johannine authorship of 1 John. Style of writing. This is not really a letter because it lacks the typical epistolary forms of a letter. There's no greetings or, or author stated at the beginning, for example. Some possible solutions. This might be a universal tractate that was to be passed around to different people. Or it could be a traveling letter, so there is no mention of who it was written to. It could be a homily or sermon. It could be a commentary on the Gospel of John to make the Gospel more understandable. The purpose is stated in chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Rewrite this to make our joy complete. So this document is a report about the eternal life. It's an encouragement to fellowship. It gives the fullness of joy that the readers may not sin and to know eternal life. The implied reason this was written, there are several issues behind it. One is Christology. The people were, John is writing to correct false doctrine. The implied reason this document was written, there were issues that stand behind the document. For example, there were some heresies and misunderstanding about Christology. The ethics were not up to par. Discipline and false teaching, problems with wealth, to combat heresies having to do with the person of Christ. The structure. There are three main statements of who God is in 1 John. God is light, God is love, and God is spirit. The letter begins with a prologue, and then we move into the topic God is light. The word is explained, and then the readers are called to walk in the light as God is in the light. God is righteousness. This means that those who believe in God should walk in righteousness and not live in sin. To deny that Jesus came in the flesh is to deny who God is. Next, God is love. There are faith statements about Jesus in chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, 5. Keeping the faith and then confidence as Christians. A summary. There are three tests in this document. Righteousness, love, and faith. Key theological themes. The centrality of community. We are mutually responsible for one another. To be committed to God means being committed to one another. First John helps us understand what it means to be a Christian community. The centrality of ethics. How should we live as followers of Jesus? This is based on God's character. It's balanced with love and rooted in fellowship. 
we must be committed to holiness and reject sin. Centrality of Christology. We define orthodoxy together. We need to keep the basics of the gospel and understand those well. Define who Jesus is for today. And then the centrality of God. God is holy and God is love. Second and third John are short letters. They, they follow more of the epistles in format. The author calls himself elder or presbyter. These are addressed to different people. Second John is addressed to the elect lady and her children. Third John is addressed to Gaius. Second John, the purpose of this letter, short letter is an exhortation to love and beware of deceivers. The themes, verses 4 to 6, talk about love. Verses 7 and 10 and 11 warn against deceivers and antichrist who deny Jesus came in the flesh. And then finally it talks about affirming tradition. Third John, the purpose is the endurance of love and hospitality. The themes, news of faithful living in love, Christian hospitality, the problem of diatrophies, who loves to be first, and a call to imitate good and Demetrius's example.